now. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today is Ava from Ava Loves Raw. She's going to be making a simple, delicious, easy recipe, and we're going to learn a little bit more about her. Please welcome her to the show. How are you? Hey, so excited to be here with you, Chef AJ. This is so exciting. Thank well, you. Thank you. The first thing I'm noticing, I've got to say, I've never met you before, is your skin. It's gorgeous. Is that from all the fruit and vegetables? Yes, I think so. I believe it or not, I have had a big complex growing up. I had cystic acne throughout my teens. I had, I even considered taking a very powerful drug. I forget what it's called, but oh, Accutane. I even considered taking that because my cystic acne was so bad. And I I just, I was traumatized really as a teenager. And so the, 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 the problems with skin continued throughout until probably my 30s, but it wasn't as bad, but it was pretty bad. Um, and it was hormonal mostly at that point. Every time I got my period, I would flare out with acne. So yes, this has been for the last seven years, thank God, I, my skin has cleared and it is better than I could have even imagined that it could be. So yes, thank you for noticing. <laughs> It looks amazing. So you, how long have you been following an exclusively raw diet? And did you adopt it at the same time you adopted a plant-based diet? Sometimes people do both at the same time. Sometimes people are plant-based and then they go raw. How did it work for you? I'd love to hear your story. So I, I actually started, veg, uh, first I went vegetarian when I was pregnant. I was repulsed by meat. I, you know how sometimes you have these aversions when you get pregnant and I just would look at it and smell it and it just turned me off completely but I never even considered being vegetarian I thought you could die without meat because I grew up in Spain in a very meat-centric um, you know culture so I thought to myself well how am I going to not eat meat I, I'm pregnant I, I need the protein so I started learning and researching and I did um, I went to I did the Cornell University by um the plant-based program that they have there and that educated me. So I felt a lot more confident about my choices. And from that, I just went on to become vegan. But unfortunately, my vegan journey did not go well because I was very uh, dependent on the products that are so processed. So I just uh, switched, you know, the cheese to veggie cheese and the meat to veggie burgers and veggie hot dogs. And that did not obviously work out very well because I was constantly eating processed food, which it just didn't occur to me that the answer was in the fruits and the vegetables, the true plant-based lifestyle. It just, it, I didn't grasp it at that point. So I became vegan, but my health conditions did not really improve much other than my cholesterol. And finally I went ahead and thought I, I have to do something. And that's when I became raw vegan and I really became immersed in the fruits, the vegetables and the nuts and the seeds. How did you first hear about raw vegan diet? So that's interesting. I don't even know, but I think I heard from someone that had healed or I had heard a story that they had healed from cancer at this um, Institute in Florida and I lived in Florida at the time and I looked it up and it was the Hippocrates Health Institute and I was just fascinated by this I thought when you have cancer you just got chemo and when you had a, an illness or a disease you just took drugs I never considered the possibility of self-healing I never considered anything outside of the medical and it's curious because at that point I had had two natural childbirths so I was fully aware of the medical complex, you know, when you go to the hospital and they hook you up to all this stuff and you have to have, a, so I, I was aware of that part and I chose to birth my babies at home, but I, I did not put two and two together with the rest of it, which is so bizarre. So I had heard about this person healing naturally and I was just fascinated and I decided I had to go to Hippocrates myself to find out what this was all about and off I went. I was there for nine weeks. <laughs> Oh my, that's incredible. What, yeah. what was it like there? Because, you know, I've had one of the chefs on the show, the executive chef. I, I haven't had Brian Clement on yet, but I've been trying to get him on. What was that experience like? You know, I really believe that that was just the, the, the most amazing transformative place, not just for me, for many, many people. I, it's almost like being surrounded by good, positive, 
vibes, wellness, it just all encapsulated in one place. It was transformative. It, I learned so much. I met amazing people. Uh, Brian is a very dynamic speaker and educator. Um, and it was just, it was amazing. And I, at that point, I also realized the connection between mind, body, spirit, health is not cut up into pieces. It's, it's all connected. And so it was a, an amazing time. I was very sad to leave there, but I had kids at the time that my friend was watching. So I had to, you know, leave Hippocrates, but yeah, it was amazing. Can you like take us what a day is like there? Do you remember? Yes, of course I remember. Wow, what a what a time there. So you wake up quite early. There's usually some kind of a meditating circle or there's it sounds woo woo, but it's not. It, there's usually a, a kijan. There's just all kinds of yoga you can do. There's infrared saunas. There is um all kinds of uh treatments that you can opt to to do. And it basically you have a very late sort of breakfast they believe in and not eating first thing in the morning and before that they give you some green juice you can have as much green juice as you want the green juice does not have any fruit in it so at first I was like what's this is terrible because I was used to juice with a lot a lot a lot of fruit and so I the, my taste buds just could not grasp this food at all and so they give you a lot of green juice. And then by mid morning, you can have a little bit of fruit if you're on that plan. They're very specific about what food to feed who. Um, you basically, there's lectures happening all day, every day. They're just fascinating people, guests, all kinds of authors. The education part is very intense there. You're almost like, I can't learn anything else today. Please leave me alone. I can't listen to it. No, no more. And so, yeah, it was fascinating. And then in the evenings, I love there's a big eating hall there where you go and everybody just sits together or not. You can choose a little solitude time. There's a huge, massive buffet with all kinds of living foods, which at first I was like, what? This is not even food. I was so it was really hard for me at first. My taste buds were used to salt, oil, sugar. And that's pretty much it. If it didn't have a ton of salt, I couldn't taste the food. So it was really hard at the beginning and I kept, um, and I felt terrible. My detox was awful too. So it was, uh, it was, it was challenging for sure, but, um, you meet wonderful people there. And then in the evenings, they usually have lectures or movies or quiet time. Uh, they, there's a great emphasis also on, um, therapy. If you need therapy, there's a wonderful therapist there that I went to see a lot because a lot of emotions and, past trauma and all kinds of things come up when you're there. It's really cathartic. It's really, it just cracks you open. So before you know it, you're a mess crying, hugging people. It's, it's amazing. So yeah, uh, uh, there's also a, a, a place where you make your own wheatgrass juice, which is something that I continue to not like, but there's a little cabana where you go and there's open spaces everywhere. So you're basically outside as much as possible. So that's beautiful too. It sounds beautiful. How many people do they get there typically? You know, I have been there when it was packed to the brim, um, but it's a three week program. I just did the nine week because I also did the educator program. I wanted to be able to coach people in the lifestyle. So I was there for nine weeks and typically I, I'm as much as 600 people, um, sorry, as little as 600 people. I've seen probably maybe even over a thousand at one point for and events. Not not at one for events and things like that. Uh, sometimes they have fairs, they have, but tip, I would say typically maybe about 500 guests. So it's not mobbed with people. And that, you have, yeah. It, that it, sounds like, I mean, because I'm, I'm used to True North where there's maybe 40 at the maximum. That sounds like it's a huge place. Yeah, it's a it's a huge campus. They they have many buildings. Uh, sometimes you discover a place that you've never been to before because you keep you walk through the trails and you're like, what the heck is that over there? And you notice that there's a place that you never saw before and you go in there and they're doing, um, I don't know, breath work or they're doing, uh, you know, some kind of other, uh, there's a meditation pond there. It's just, yeah, it's really big, <laughs> really, really big. Wow. You said at first you didn't care for the green juice. Was it just greens? They put absolutely no fruit in it? Absolutely no fruit. Their green juice recipe is celery, cucumber, 
sunflower sprouts and pea sprouts and that's it and then sometimes they add ginger or garlic depending on your preference so it can be quite the pungent drink and I just took it plain I'm like no don't put any garlic or ginger my god this is bad enough as it is I just did not like it but then by the time I left I craved it I was like I give me that green juice and I would you can fill up as much as you want. There's just pictures that they bring out. And of course, everything is, the sprouts are, they, they grow them there. So I would just walk around with a huge jar of green juice and just sit throughout the day. Yeah. It's incredible. Do, do, they, do they, so are most of the meals buffet there? Yes, everything is buffet. You just walk up and you pick what you want. It's a beautiful array of food. But again, it's at first, it's a little shocking because there's no cooked food. I think there was one day a week where they had a soup, a cooked soup, but most of it, it's all raw. And so that could be quite intimidating for a lot of people. I know it was for me. Um, but then once they start educating you, you just kind of relax a little bit and you embrace it. But I remember at first I would sneak in salt. I was so addicted to salt. I had salt in my pocket, my literal pocket, and I would sprinkle it on the food and then hide it right away. And it took a while for me to get used to no salt. It was just, yeah, it was tough for sure. That's mm -hmm. interesting. And so then you, after the nine weeks there, you stayed raw all this time. So after the nine weeks I left there, I left a changed person. And then of course I went home and I thought, how am I going to do this at home? And I started, I, 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 my approach was, let me do high raw. But that was a slippery slope. I felt like I was just not getting the results I wanted and I still had some issues. And um, so I decided after a while, let me just go all raw and try it for myself long term. Let, let me give myself six months. I said to myself, let me just give myself a little bit of time. And then just one thing led to another. I just loved it. I thought this is life changing. So I continued on for se almost seven years. And then in the last six months, I feel like I'm at a different stage now. I feel that I don't have to be 100% anymore. I was very strict and very focused, very dedicated. I have come to learn that there are many other ways of healing and that you do have to have all the components. It's not just the food you eat. It's, it's, it's just mind, body, soul. So I, I started thinking, well, um, I started working out. That's one thing I did. I started lifting weights and I thought, let me, let me have a few more little extra calories. So I started adding maybe potatoes or broccoli, something like that, or sweet potatoes. And it's been wonderful too. So I'm probably 95 raw, 95% raw and a little bit of cooked in the evenings on some nights, not every night. Yeah, I'm hearing that even John Kohler, who's been on several times, has a little bit of cooked food now. So that- yeah. So, I mean, you said you have children, right? Yes. So how did you manage seven years raw? Were, were they raw too? Do you feed them differently? Do you cook their food? Yes, I cook their food. And, but I was, I had been so sick, Chef AJ, that to me, it was not even a question. I, I, my, I was laser focused on healing. I, I was like, I'm doing this because I had started getting good results. And I just felt like I'm doing this come what may. And yes, I have little kids. Now they're teenagers. But when I started, they were little. And so I would cook for them first. I always make, I'm um, sorry, I would make my food first and then I would cook for them. So that's how I did it. Always have my food ready and then make their food. And no, they're not raw. They're not even um, vegan for that matter. They eat eggs sometimes. Plant-based at home. But yeah, my husband and kids sometimes will have eggs or they'll have yogurt sometimes some things like this but not typically um or pizza they might have once in a while but yeah at home plant-based and yes I cooked for them but like I said it was just I I one of those people that when I do something I do something so yeah. what conditions did you have and how long did it take for you to notice improvements so I had in my 40s I am 52 now but in my 40s I started developing, well, it, this had been coming on for years, but I had a lot of issues that I thought were normal, quote unquote, extreme fatigue, drunk a ton of coffee every day, uh, extreme PMS, uh, bad breath, bad digestion, bloating, um, constipation, hair loss, but I just kind of thought, 
Well, doesn't everybody? I, I don't know. I just, when I talk to people, yeah, I have that, I have that. And I went to the doctor, there's nothing wrong with you. So, but then in my mid forties, something happened with my hormones where I started having really intense periods that would last, no joke, three weeks. Wow. I almost needed a, I mean, I was told I needed a blood transfusion. I was just too scared to get one. Um, I, it would, it would be really horrific to the point where I was homebound. It was very, very heavy, very severe, left me completely wiped out, pale, dark circles. I was just a, a hot mess. So those were the issues that I had. And to me, um, when I went to the doctor, they wanted to put me on birth control pills to regulate my hormones. And um, they said, if that doesn't work, we're going to do a, a procedure where they scrape the lining of your uterus. And that's probably not going to work. So you're just going to have to get used to the idea of a hysterectomy. And I'm 44 years old and I'm going hysterectomy. Like my grandmother had that when she was, you know, old. I'm too young. This is crazy. Taking out body parts. That's what made me start, you know, looking for alternatives. And when I had heard about that person, at the Hippocrates thing, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. But so those were my issues. They were pretty bad. And um, yeah, I was so debilitated. And so when I started on raw, I took about probably three months for my periods to sort of like calm down a little bit, <laughs> stop, stop bleeding. And in about six months, I would say I was pretty much running a, a, a beautiful cycle. And um, all the, uh, the other issues took a little while. So the bags under my eyes took a long time, what I consider a long time, probably about two years, actually, where I still had really bad bags under my eyes. And my tongue was always coated in white. It was just one of those things that I, I must have had a lot of yeast overgrowth just had a lot of issues, but I would say after the first two years, and I know that sounds like a long time and people are going to be like, oh my God, that takes forever. But it was little incremental things. But then by the time I hit the two year mark, it was noticeably much, much better. And um, <clears throat> by the third year, I was uh, a new person through and through. No more fatigue, a ton of energy, like ridiculous amount of energy. And uh, that that was the most amazing thing because when my kids were little, I was always tired and always sitting down and always laying down. And when this whole thing happened and I just, I could bounce out of bed in the morning, I was just, I'm a believer. <laughs> this is amazing. Well, well, first of all, I think you look amazing. You don't look like you're in your fifties, but what I really am hearing in this story is your resilience in not giving up because a lot of people expect healing to be instantaneous. And in your story, you're saying it wasn't, but you stuck with it and you didn't give up. And then you achieved the, the health goals that you were trying to achieve. Yeah, it's never instantaneous. If it's instant, I mean, you, it took years to get you into the mess you were into. How is it going to be instantaneous? You know, it's like when people get pregnant and they gain 40 pounds and the next day they, they have the baby and they want to lose the weight. No, it's going to, it took you nine months to gain the weight. It's going to take you about that time to sort of get back into shape. Don't, don't, you can't rush these kind of things. And so I, I, but I was very hopeful for, because of the little daily things. Like one day I noticed that I, I noticed one thing that was kind of weird that I did not need deodorant anymore. I just didn't smell bad where I used to have to have the heavy coating kind of deodorant. Cause I was always very self-conscious about it. And I noticed I don't smell bad. My breath doesn't smell. My skin is clearing. My hair is coming back because I had always had very fine, thin hair. And I still do. That's not going to change. It's just the makeup of my hair is fine and thin. And I don't have a lot of hair. I just didn't want to lose what hair I had. So when my hair stopped falling off, which it had been just coming out in clumps, I was just, that's all the evidence I needed that I was on the right path. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely, especially like when it comes to weight loss, the plant-based diet, what even, even it doesn't necessarily have to be raw works great, but people want immediate results and it just doesn't work that way. Did no. you get things like that in your health educator program? And what, what are you like? Are you a health coach? Do you work with people? How do you work with people? Yes, I do work with people. I'm a health coach, thanks to Hippocrates. And then, like I said, I did the Cornell thing where I educated myself on plant-based nutrition because, it, you know, there's things that you need to know. It's not as simple as, okay, start eating this. I mean, 
So I continued my education with that and I have been coaching for a little while. Probably I really intensified my coaching after I had a hold on my own uh, healing because I didn't want to tell people this is working for me if, if it hadn't yet, in fact. So I gave myself plenty of time. And um, probably by the fourth year or so, third, fourth year, I started helping more people because people would ask me, tell us, you know, my friends, what are you doing? How did you do this? How did you do that? So, um, so I've been also lately, I just started a new thing, my, my group coaching, which is amazing. My little community that we have is mostly women. We have one guy, no, we have two guys. And so, because I, one of the things I recognized was that without some support, it's really hard. I had Hippocrates and I had a bunch of people there helping me along, but my goodness, if you got to do some things alone, it's kind of tough. So I, that's why I created my online community where we meet once a week, we ask questions, we show support. And so that's about mostly what I do these days, one-on-one -on -one coaching, but now I'm more concentrated on my group coaching. Yes. That's great. <laughs> Can you tell us like what you eat in a day and how that's maybe changed since you came from Hippocrates? Because people want to know in general what people that look and feel great eat, but especially people that are high raw or raw, because a lot of them can't figure out what the heck do I eat? Do I just eat food all day? Yeah. And I was never a great lover of just eating a bunch of fruit because I felt like it left me kind of high. I just felt jittery with all that fruit. So I was never a great lover of just eating fruit. I do eat a lot of fruit, but I always kind of felt like a big bowl of mangoes never did it for me. And I think it's important to make the distinction between are you really, do you really have a lot of energy or are you overstimulated? Because of course, if you drink coffee and eat sugar, even if it's fruit sugar, you're going to be overstimulated. So I was never a great lover of the big, massive amounts of fruit that some raw vegans eat. I, that was never my thing. I played with it and I experimented with it, but I, I kind of felt like now this is, this leaves me kind of jittery. So I've always had an emphasis on the greens and the veggies. And that's just how I also think that as I'm a little bit older, I'm not, when you're 25, you can get away with a lot. You can eat what you want. You can eat all the mangoes and all the bananas and the dates you want. I think that when you are in your fifties, things change your metabolism, you know, calories are calories. You can't eat as much as you once did when you were a kid, unless you're a marathon runner, you're just not going to burn those calories. And I know people that are eating a fruit-based lifestyle that are a little bit overweight, that are overweight because guess what? There's calories in the fruit too. So my approach has always been a little bit more balanced, not always, but especially since my late forties and early fifties, a little bit more balanced. So what I do eat is I, I do love my green juices, do that every, almost every day. And if I don't make it at home, I go to the juice store and I have someone make it for me because I feel like that's like my my morning drink of energy. And then I probably will have a smoothie. But I always put a lot of kale in it or spinach or dandelions or cilantro or whatever greens I have. I put some fruit and I put some greens in it. I also put celery. I put uh, zucchini. I like my smoothies to be nice and balanced. And if not, I might have, maybe sometimes I will have a little bit of fruit. Like when watermelon season kicks, I'm a big fan of having watermelon for breakfast or melons for breakfast. I love that. But so that's mostly it. And then usually uh, mid morning or mid after, sorry, uh, around lunchtime, I might have a little bit of fruit again, or I might have another smoothie. Sometimes I have wraps, which I love making my own little easy wraps with a little bit of collard greens. And then sometimes I put some walnut meat in there and I will put some veggies. Sometimes I have avocado rolls. It just depends how hungry I am that day. And then for dinner is 99% of the time is a big salad. It, that's, that's my thing. I love to pile on the greens. The more diverse, the better, at least three or four different greens. And then the veggies, the avocado, and lately, like I said, maybe a sweet baked potato. Um, so yeah, that, it's a very simple way of eating, but I do aim for variety. Right. What kind of dressing do you use on your salads? So I, my favorite is tahini and I am a great, I just love tahini. I love the flavor of tahini. I sometimes just don't even need to blend it. I put a little tahini and I put a little bit of water and I just mix it up really well. I put some garlic powder or onion powder or some spices and I, just, you know, mix it up real well. And that's usually my go-to. I'm not into, sometimes I make them with cashews or 
or maybe walnuts even, pistachio nut butter sometimes, but I'm not a great lover of having to get the equipment out. So I'm usually just kind of like really quick and then put a little lemon, a little bit of vinegar and, or sometimes Bragg's aminos. It just depends. Uh, Hippocrates has good dressings, but they tend to be a little heavier. And so I, I don't make those anymore. Um, yeah, but sometimes Bragg's and lemon, it just, I keep it simple. You mentioned you still make yourself green juice. Do you same the same kind that you had at Hippocrates, those same four ingredients? No, I don't, uh, because I don't always grow my own microgreens and I hate paying for them because they're so easy to grow. And I just I have refused to pay someone else to grow them for me. So if I don't have microgreens, I don't use them. But my green juices are usually celery, cucumber. That's a great base to have because they're very water rich. And then I'll add kale. Um, I'll add some beets or carrots sometimes. I'll put maybe a half an apple in there or a full apple. I will do um, collards. I just what sometimes I clean out my fridge. I'm like, okay, what's in there? Dump it on the counter and get juicing. I don't even um, worry so much about recipes. Is whatever I have on hand, I throw in the juicer and we're good to go. So I. Sometimes it's a clean out the fridge kind of juice. <laughs> Is there a particular juicer you recommend? Yes, I love cucumbers and I think they're so hydrating and soothing to the GI tract. I love what cucumbers do for your skin. So I do recommend a cucumber based juice and of course throwing in a little bit of garlic, I'm sorry, ginger. I love that. And then some greens. So even if you don't have celery, and I know that the celery juice has kind of been overhyped a little bit, just throw a you know cucumber juice with one or two cucumbers and a little kale and a little ginger and some lemon. You have a beautiful juice and so hydrating. Yeah. I think that I think cucumbers are great for the skin, whether you put them on the skin or you eat them, there's something about them. Do you follow 100% organic or just do the best you can? You know, Chef AJ, I mean, I do the best I can. I'm not, I just can't uh, sometimes, you know, rationalize getting an organic watermelon. So I'll, I won't. Uh, pineapples, bananas, avocados. I mean, we're blessed. We live in California. The produce here is so amazing. I do shop at the farmer's market as much as possible because it's local. It's fresh. My farmers here, they I can smell the earth on it. They picked it the night before. So I do go for quality. And some of these farmers can afford the certification to be organic, but they're, they don't spray anything. So I'm like, you know what? That's good enough for me. I know these guys are working hard. And this food is just vibing with, with vibrancy. So I do, if I go to the store, I won't buy non-organic lettuce. But if I'm at the farmer's market and it says we don't spray, you know what? That's good. So yeah, and bananas and all that, I don't buy organic. Do you think it's easier though that you live in a, a warmer climate, Southern California? You know, I when I lived in Florida, I, I thought, oh, what's the big deal? You could do this anywhere. But you know... <laughs> When you're in a colder climate, I definitely think it's harder because I hear the winters can be cold, not as cold as other places, but we had a very wet, rainy, cold winter here. And I was definitely, I had miso broth a couple of times and I had my uh, a heavier breakfast bowl sometimes and I would have some oats sometimes. And so it's easier for sure. Um, now I know it because li living... The difference between here and Florida, Florida, it was so much easier. All I wanted was juicy fruit and, you know, green juices and smoothies and I'm good to go on a fresh salad. But here I've had days where I'm like, I could definitely use a little cup of hot broth miso. And um, yeah, <laughs> so. Absolutely. Do you exercise a lot? And when you were at Hippocrates, was that something that people did? Uh, yeah, exercise plays a massive role in my life and at Hippocrates too. The, from day one, they're saying you got to move, you got to move your lymph, get on the rebounder. If that's all you can do, just do very light little rebounding exercises. If that's all you can manage, go for a walk. They really encourage the exercise. But I've always been, thank God, uh, an exerciser. Even when I was very tired and very fatigued, I felt better after taking the dog for a walk or I felt better swimming or doing something 
So I was always aware that exercise is just so important. So yes, I do exercise. And now I have the energy to exercise, which takes on a whole new meaning. And since I turned uh, in my 50s, I started lifting weights. I'm like, I got to get my bone density nice and strong and my muscles. And so I, I actually enjoy exercising. And people are, oh, it's so hard. Man, to me, it's like me time for one. I'm at the gym by myself, no kids, no husband, no nobody. Da, 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 da. And it's it's wonderful. <laughs> like, what are you complaining about? Sometimes it's just my headphones on, get on the treadmill, just walk if that's all I want to do or do the Stairmaster. And then I lift some weights and I, I feel uh, reinvigorated and recharged. So, but I understand it's a catch 22. People are like, I don't feel like doing it, but what you ha you have to change that mentality. You have to do it in order to feel like doing it. When you make yourself do it, then eventually you start feeling like you actually want to do it because you feel amazing. Yeah, absolutely. You always feel better when you do it, whether you initially felt like it at the beginning. Yeah, the hardest part is getting there sometimes. You're like, oh, but my routine is really good. I get up, go to the gym first thing, then come back and think, take my, my youngest to school. So if I don't get it done in that time before she has to go to school then I don't go because then my day starts and my clients start and all my so I know that I get my butt out of bed because first I have the energy too and I go to the gym and I go on an empty stomach which to me is even more powerful I feel like I work out a good appetite at the gym come back and then I have my juice and my breakfast so I definitely um definitely love going in the morning first thing and just get it done I agree. If I don't do it in the morning, it doesn't get done. And the days I don't feel like doing it, I just tell myself, I only have to get on the bike five minutes. But by the time I put the gear on and the shoes and strap in, I mean, come on, you know, it's like I'm already there, right? Yeah, yeah I do the same. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I'll just do I'll just do a little bit of treadmill. But then you do that. And you're like, well, okay, I'll do some abs. Uh, okay, you know, by the time you <laughs> You talk yourself into a workout, so. Right. You just have to be consistent and just make it a priority. But I agree with you. If it doesn't get done for me in the morning, I don't know how these people do it in the evening. It's like, I'm tired, but hey, it's, if, whenever you do it, it's better than not doing it. You mentioned about Hippocrates, they were body, mind, and spirit. So where does the spirit part come in? So they they do concentrate, like I said, a lot on the, uh, well, the healing aspect through therapy. And they encourage meditation a lot. They encourage uh, Qigong and things like this, more meditative sort of practices. But there's a, a reflection pond. They, they, it's not that they teach you to meditate, but there is meditation circles. And there's a great emphasis on sharing your feelings and talking about these things. And like I said, the, the therapy aspect. So, yeah, I feel it's very well-rounded for that reason, because th these are things that I even never really wanted to talk about or really discuss. I was embarrassed. Uh, but once you're there, you just like caution to the wind. You're like, I'm sharing everything, you know, and it's uh, it's very, very healing, I think. So, Have yeah. you been able to inspire any friends or family to change their diet or improve their health in any way? You know, my husband was a meat eater like you would not believe. And now he's completely plant-based and he has been for a number of years. And it's funny because he is someone that you can't talk into anything. My husband is a stubborn SOB. He is like an alpha male kind of guy. And I at first was a little pushy with it. And then I just said, you know what? I got to do my thing. He can do his thing. I'll, he, he, in fact, he told me one day, you do whatever you want. I want some kind of animal on my plate every night. So you do what you want. I want my chicken. I want my steak. I'm like, okay. Cause you know, I cook for him. I enjoy cooking for my family. So, but then one day he's like, you know what? When he saw the kind of food I was eating, you know what? You don't have to make the chicken. You know what? Forget that. And little by little by himself, he changed. And it's funny because just the other day we were having a conversation. He goes, Ava, in the last month, I have heard from four people who have had heart attacks. I said, I'm telling you. And he and I said to him, those heart attacks didn't just happen. They started building up years and decades ago. I said, so thank God you changed your, your diet because you would have been one of those guys. And he's in good shape because he takes care of himself. He's always exercised. But he says, yeah, I can see that now. These guys just, he said, out of nowhere. And I said, it wasn't out of nowhere, Dave. It, they didn't just have a heart attack. 
it just it's been building up so I changed him and then I had some friends that definitely have been influenced um not to go raw but to definitely go plant-based so yeah it's been good (laughs) that's fantastic do you ever make any of those you know those raw desserts they're so amazing you know what I am not the greatest chef in the world (laughs) So I can't say that I do, but my little one, she's now 15. She came to Hippocrates with me many times and she loves making raw desserts and she makes them for me sometimes. And I'm, like I said, I never made one, but she's made me cheesecakes and she's made me parfaits and she has made me chia puddings and she's like, mom, I'm going to make you. So, yeah, I, I try not to eat too much um, sugar and desserts and things like this. So that, that's something that I've really concentrated on probably since I turned 50. I'm like, you know what? Let me just back because I used to have a big sweet tooth and uh, I haven't been so much lately. So but my little one, yeah, she's a, she's a real good chef. <laughs> I didn't realize families and children could come to Hippocrates. That's fabulous. Well, you know, because I was a health educator and uh, I and I was, she can't stay there, but she could come for the day. She could visit. She could. She met everybody. She met Victoria School Princess. She met Brian. She met Anna Maria. She met everyone. She was just walking around because my little one is very confident. <laughs> so she just walked around, swam in the pool, did everything. So yeah, she would come for the day and, and she she just loves it. She was homeschooled. She my Both my kids were homeschooled until high school. Then at high school, I put them in, in school. They wanted to go to high school. So she had plenty of time to go and she had many days there, yes. That's interesting. They were homeschooled and now they go to school. Do, did they have a preference? And was that a hard transition from them going from homeschooling to a school? Well, it wasn't a hard transition at all, much to my actually surprise, because I thought, oh, my gosh, I was very lax as a homeschool mom. My biggest emphasis was read, just read. I mean, we we had the math basics and then just pick, you know, we'd go to the library two or three times a week. We'd check out 10 books. We'd bring back check uh, 10 books. And my kids were just voracious readers. So then when they got to be teenagers, I'm like, guys, high school is actually a lot of fun. And I always wanted them to have fun growing up. I didn't want them to get up early, didn't want them to have homework. I just wanted them to have a good, wholesome, playful uh, childhood. So when they were teenagers, I said, guys, actually, I grew up in another country, but I always dreamt of coming to America and going to like, remember Back to the Future, you know, the movie and all that, the high school experience. I was like, you guys have to try high school. It's a lot of fun in this country. You guys have dances and you have a lot of social aspects and and they're like, yeah, we want to try it. So they the, the transition to high school. And it's so funny. They, they're both straight A students. And I, I was surprised because I thought they're going to be behind in some things. But you know what? My kids can learn quick. So if they don't know something, they figure it out. They learn. They ask questions. They weren't shy like the other kids. So it's been a good experience. I'm proud of them for that. That's fantastic. Well, I noticed you have a bunch of jars in front of you and some bananas and strawberries. It looks like you're going to make something. Well, I wanted to show what I have on days that I have a good heavy leg workout, which is once a week. So once a week or maybe every 10 days, I feel like sinking my teeth into something a little bit more, you know, a little bit more filling than the fruit. And so this is one of my go-to bowls that are so simple and easy to make. The trick about these bowls, I I really think, is the homemade nut milk. I make my own nut milk. So this is pecan milk and this is almond milk. And I just make them myself. They're so easy to make and they are no gums, no preservatives, no fillers, no nothing. This is straight up filtered water and nuts. And I just put them through the blender and then I put them through the nut milk bag. And this is like, to me, this is delicious. You can add these two smoothies too. So what I do is I buy these oats, which are sprouted oats. And I just put a little bit, this is going to be my basis. And some raw vegans don't believe in oats. I I like oats. I'm not a dogmatic raw vegan anymore. I used to be, but life's too short to be stressed out over oats. You know what I mean? Oats are good. And these are sprouted and they're organic and all of that. Then I'm going to add some um, of this buckwheat groats. These were big at Hippocrates. Hippocrates really encouraged people to have these for breakfast. 
And these are loaded with iron and calcium and they're uh, very high in protein. The trick about buckwheat groats is that you have to rinse them really well. Otherwise they're gummy, they're slimy, they're just not nice. So if you rinse them really, really well and then you soak them for about an hour, then if you happen to have a dehydrator, which I do, I stick them in the dehydrator until they're bone dry and then I can store them again in my jar. And that way they're always ready. I don't have to think, oh, I have to soak my groats. I have to rinse my, these are already rinsed, soaked, dehydrated, everything. So I love to do some of my buckwheat groats, which are very high in protein. And at Hippocrates, they call these uh, breakfast buckwheaties instead of <laughs> buckwheaties, it was funny to me. Anyway, so I just put a little bit of the buckwheat groats in there, which are very high in protein. Then I do a little bit of my, well, I found this at the store the other day and I thought it was interesting. They're clusters, they're cashew clusters and they have a little bit of cacao. So if I happen to have something like this, I'll throw it in there. If you don't have it, you obviously don't have to, but this kind of adds a nice little layer of yumminess. So I put that in there. I some You can add carrot powder if you wanted to make it a little chocolatey. You can add a little coconut if you want. So I, some, I like the flavor of coconut. So sometimes I'll just put a little sprinkle of coconut on top just for a little extra yumminess. Then I do some pumpkin seeds, which again, I like to soak all my seeds. I soak and dehydrate them and then I can store them back again in the jar. So I will do a little bit of a sprinkle of pumpkin seeds. And this is like making your own delicious, amazing cereal. Then I'll do some ko koji berries. I, I never know how to pronounce this. Koji berries. I'll do a little sprinkle of koji berries. Then I will do some amazing chia seeds, which you cannot overemphasize the importance of these little miracle guys. These are very, very high in protein. They're a complete... Uh, protein actually they have all nine essential amino acids so I just sprinkle that on top mix it all up it's like your own um, muesli kind of thing but homemade do you and have to grind I, the chia seeds oh, I'm sorry to interrupt but I, sometimes people say they grind their chia seeds do you have to grind them I don't like to I like them like this like um it's, when I make a smoothie by I, chia seeds what I'll do is I'll add them at the very end when the smoothie's blended I'll just add them and just mix them in because I like to chew them. If you grind them, they become very gelatinous. In fact, they become really gelatinous if you soak them in, in liquid because they absorb 15 times their weight in liquid. So I just put them whole in there and I eat this right away. I don't let it sit. So it's um, they're, they're going to be fine. And I put about a tablespoon of them in there. Then I add some banana, of course, because I like some people don't like to mix uh, nuts with fruit. I have no issue whatsoever doing that. Although at the beginning of my journey, I could hardly digest food. So I was very careful with my food combining because I could, I was always bloated, always digestive issues. So I just thought, you know what, I'm going to do this, follow this uh, food, um, food combining guidelines to a T and I did and I took about maybe a year and a half and then I noticed that it just kind of went away so then I'm going to slice some strawberries in there you can put whatever fruit you want in there it doesn't have to be what I'm doing but you know a little bit of fruit topping is nice and then I like to add a little bit of cinnamon because <laughs> cinnamon regulates blood sugar so it's nice some people add pumpkin spice if you want to, and then my almond milk, my homemade almond milk, and you have a delicious, nutritious, and easy breakfast that didn't cost a fortune because these ingredients, when you buy them in bulk, are so affordable. And uh, that's it. That's all. I, that's all I do. This is my power bowl, and my kids actually eat it. My husband eats it. If you let it rest a little bit. Obviously, it'll get a little softer. I like it like this. I like to chew on it. And uh, so, yeah, this is my my power uh, raw vegan. This is vegan, but it's actually raw vegan because nothing's been cooked. I don't cook anything here. So that looks it. delicious. How do you make your almond milk? Do you have a special machine to make it in? So good question. I just use my blender, but I have a high-speed blender. It's a Vitamix, which I highly recommend. You can buy them refurbished. 
on Amazon or directly from the Vitamix people. If you buy a refurbished one, they come guaranteed. You don't have to worry that you're buying a lemon. And you can save, you know, probably a good 150 bucks, which is what I did. I bought a refurbished one and I've had it for like seven years and it's the most amazing machine. So I just soak the nuts. The There's a great book called Soak Your Nuts by yep. Kenya Calabresi. Yep. She's been on the show. Yeah, That's uh, she's so wonderful. Um, so, yeah, so you soak the nuts for a, depending on the nut you want to soak for like 12 hours. I change the water once at least. And then you put them in the blender with water. So I do one part cup to three, uh, th one cup of nuts to three parts of water. I put a couple of dates in there to sweeten. I might even put some of the spices. The pumpkin spice is really good. I blend it really good. And then what you have to do is you have to get a nut milk bag, which I have right here. And I prefer nylon over cotton. It's just my preference. I think they stay a little cleaner, if you will. And then you just put the the milk through here and you squeeze the milk out, you leave the pulp in the bag. You can do other things with the pulp if you want. And then that's your milk, it's so easy. The only caveat, it only lasts in the fridge for about three days. You have to make it, you know, I make it every third day basically. And sometimes I don't make it for a couple of weeks and then I make it again. Or like the other day, I bought amazing pecans that are local and I made the most delicious pecan milk. And even my kids were like, this tastes so different. It was just delicious. I put a bunch of cinnamon in there. It was so good. So yeah, that's the only thing. So I don't make big batches. I make smaller batches. What do you do with the leftover pulp? So I have a great recipe. If I can be bothered, I'll make these cookies that Mimi Kirk, actually, I saw her making them. And they also made them at Hippocrates, one of the chefs that made them. And so you mix the pulp of the nuts, whatever it is, and you mix them with banana. And then you put a bunch of uh, other little spices in there. And you make these balls and then you uh, flatten them a little, and you put them in the dehydrator. And they're amazing. But some people use them in smoothies. They just, to, in order to maybe have a little a smoothie that's a little higher in protein, you can put the pulp in there. It, it freezes very well too. Sometimes I just throw it away if I'm being honest, especially if um, I love hemp milk. Hemp milk, there's very, very little pulp left. So I just throw that away. Um, but yeah, hemp milk, actually one thing about hemp milk, it lasts longer in the fridge than nut milk. So you can leave it for about four days in there nice well you mentioned you have a dehydrator what do you make in your dehydrator so my dehydrator I use it mostly these days at the beginning I was more into making kind of like fancier recipes but once I got used to the what I really wanted was the, the salads the greens the veggies I don't use it so much anymore but what I do use it for is my nuts so I soak the nuts and then I dehydrate them till they're bone dry. And that's mostly what I use it for these days, just to have my nuts at the ready so that I don't have to think, oh, they got to be soaked. Oh, they got to be sprung. I don't, I already have them ready. And, um, but I do sometimes love to do veggies. Like I'll do cauliflower, broccoli, zucchini, carrots, and I'll marinate that and dehydrate a little bit so that it's kind of like, it takes the crunch out a little bit. And that's delicious in wraps and I make the most delicious wraps with that. I haven't made that in a while, that reminded me actually. So I, yes, I love making the veggies. Sometimes I make the cookies or the desserts. My kids actually eat them sometimes. Um, and that's basically what I make, Not nothing too fancy. What's the benefit of soaking the nuts and then dehydrating them? You know, some people believe that they have a little bit of what I would call anti-nutrients. They have enzyme inhibitors. So when you soak them, the, the nut, the, the actual nut or seed thinks that is being germinated. So it releases these anti-nutrients and um, they're said to digest better. They are, at Hippocrates, they were really big. So I guess this has just been ingrained in me. Don't eat them unless they've been soaked and, you know, soaked first. So um, they're really big on it. it. It does seem to help tremendously with digestion because I have noticed there's a local uh, gal here that sells, lady that sells these raw vegan bars and they're made with nuts, but those nuts have not been soaked. And when I eat them, I find them very constipating. I, like I have one of those bars and I'm like, man, my digestion is not like it normally is. And, but when I eat my nuts that have been soaked and dehydrated, I have no issues whatsoever. Nice. Do you have any books? 
Yeah, uh, I have some ebooks. Yes, uh, they're mostly recipes. Even I'm not the most amazing chef, but recipes that are you know tried and tested by me, who I'm not a chef. So uh, if I can do those, yeah, anybody can do them, and they're very simple. Uh, I have a book that's smoothie recipes, and then I have one that's like a, a, a sort of like a detox kind of recipes where they're simple yet they're they're good for for healing and detoxing and then I have another ebook about how I healed and what therapies I used because it wasn't just the food I did a lot of other things and so um so yeah three ebooks I have that's great and if people want to follow you on social media where are you most active so YouTube is my my place. I have a lot of videos on YouTube, um, on Instagram, but I can, I don't really like Instagram that much. Ah, uh, it's just I feel it like it's exhausting, and I just I, and what's the point of like two little you know too short of like I like to get to. Oh, thank you, thank you for being like one of the first people that understands that I feel the exact same way. I don't get it. I mean, how can you articulate anything in thirty to sixty seconds of any value? of any value but that's the trouble that there's very I don't find value there and also I don't like then you can write stuff but nobody reads it and it to me is like oh my gosh I want to connect a little bit more than than just a a blip you know and people are just mindlessly scrolling and I just I love long format videos where you can actually sit down and watch something of value learn something be inspired you know, it, it, but we live in a society that's quick, 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 quick. Ah, so I don't like it so much. I'm on there because it's almost like you have to be, but I don't really devote a lot of time there. Well, you're really a kindred spirit. Thank you for saying that because, you know, my shows are almost always an hour. Sometimes they're longer, but people have the attention span of a gnat and I just, I'm not going to play that game. They've always went, well, can't you do shorter videos? Well, what am I going to do? Like, how do you do a cooking demo in 30 to 60 seconds? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. But I think it's our generation, you know, as older ladies, we value that more, the connection, the younger kids, it's amazing. They just, it's, t it's all TikTok now. And, and they don't even watch the whole TikTok. They could be maybe a minute and they watch 30 seconds, next, next. I'm like this is to me is exhausting. I'm like I don't play in that game either. <laughs> oh my god! Well, thank you so much. So YouTube, that that's great to know, and you'll give me all the information. I'm sure so we'll have it in the show notes, and people will will be able to click on it and and follow you and find you. Well, this was a wonderful story. It's very inspiring, and I especially like the fact that you didn't expect to heal overnight. So many people are like, well, I was on a plant-based diet and, you know, I still got sick or, you know, I, you know, I've been doing it a month, you know, it yeah. takes, healing is not an overnight success is not an overnight thing for most people. No, definitely not. I mean, little things. Yeah. You start noticing, you know what? I do have more energy. You know what? My skin does look better, but when you get blood work, maybe you're going to be a little disappointed. Oh, my cholesterol didn't come down as much as I thought, or my blood markers are still not where I want them to be. Okay. Don't give up. It, it does take a little bit of time. And especially as we get older, we have a lot of damage to undo. So yeah, definitely um, give it time and keep the faith you're on the right track, just keep going. Yeah. And if people want to work with you or join your group, we'll give them that information as well. Yes, definitely. <laughs> well, thank you. This was a wonderful interview. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. You're lovely. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another wonderful show. Take care, everyone.